In this video, we take a look at the advantages and disadvantage of secondary storage devices. So in the last video, we talked to you about different secondary storage devices. Not only do you need to know the advantages and disadvantages of each, but you need to be able to be given a scenario in an exam and choose and justify the most appropriate secondary storage medium. For example, you need to think about capacity, speed, portability, durability, reliability and cost. So you choose the correct device. Remember, magnetic hard disks have a high data capacity, fast data access requirements, low cost storage solutions and cloud storage on server farms. Solid state is suitable for low powered embedded systems, rugged applications, low to medium data capacity requirements, silent operation, very fast data access, and they're also small and lightweight. Magnetic storage media covers things like magnetic tapes, which are very largely out of date, and also magnetic hard drives, which are still very common. Solid state drives include USB or flash drives, solid state hard drives, and a whole variety of SD and memory cards. So let's think about this situation. Let's imagine we have a helmet mounted camera on a um, motorcycle speedster. So would you recommend here a solid state storage device or a magnetic storage device? Well, ideally in the exam, you would go for solid state because remember, magnetic storage has lots of moving parts and is prone to damage with scratches and bumps. It's fragile. So here, solid state would definitely be the way to go. Here we have a home computer storing an operating system and applications. Well, you could argue that both would be appropriate here. But of course, you'd just have to justify your answer. With magnetic storage, it would be cheaper byte for byte, thus saving the person money. And also, because this is a home computer, it's fixed and in one location, meaning it's not going to be moving about. Again, this means we don't have to worry about the fragile nature of the magnetic hard drive. So this is probably the better option. This one's a bit more clear cut. We've been told a travel agent business needs to back, out, back up two terabytes of data. This is quite a lot of data, and we already know that magnetic storage is cheaper byte for byte than solid state. So this is probably a better solution. And again, as these devices are fixed and in place, they don't have to worry about the fragile nature of magnetic medium. Here we have a scenario of a student transferring files between home and school. You might suggest here, that solid state drives are the best way to go. They could save their files to a USB or flash drive and carry them to school. They could save them to their phone or other device. Because they're being mobile and they're moving between places, these items could get knocked about or easily dropped, not making it a suitable scenario for magnetic storage. Now in reality these days, very few people actually use USB or flash pens because it's increasingly common that we're storing data in the cloud so we can access it anywhere at any time. But given this scenario and the two options, we definitely want to go for solid state. How about a company storing training videos long term? Well, again, we're talking about videos that could be taking quite a while. Uh, we're talking videos take up a lot of space. And they're also going to be recording a lot of these videos. They simply want to store them for long term reference. So we're talking about large volumes of data stored probably on a computer or a server in a company. Again, it's suggesting here magnetic storage may be a better way. It would keep costs down. The storage capacity is high. And once again, we don't have to worry about the issue of movement. So we don't have to worry about the fragile nature of magnetic storage medium. And finally, how about storing audio tracks on a portable MP3 player, or quite more commonly now, just simply on your smartphone? Well, you should have got the idea by now. 
This is obviously a highly portable device. You take it round with you. You maybe put it in the bottom of a bag, in your jeans pockets. You walk around, you go for a run, you're mobile. That means your smartphone is prone to friction, uh, dropping, and it's and because of that fragile nature, we're much better to go for a solid state hard drive that has no moving parts. Are you taking the exam in the summer of 2027 or later? If you are, the exam board has simplified the AQA GCSE 8525 specification and actually removed some content. You no longer will be expected to know the rest of this video and it will not appear in your exam. Unfortunately, if you're taking the exam in the summer of 2026, you must continue to watch this video as the content could appear in your exam. So a third type of secondary storage is optical storage, including CD, DVDs and Blu-rays. So in the exam, you might be given quite an outdated example, and this is the reason this has been removed from the specification. But if you are taking the exam in 2026, you might be given the situation of a video game console or distributing a new song album. These would typically be situations where the exam board are looking for you to say an optical medium. Music often used to be delivered in CD format. You'd go to the shops and buy films on DVD. Computer games would often come on DVD and Blu-rays. And all but the latest generation of consoles almost exclusively had optical drives and you'd buy the game. These days, of course, most music is streamed. Most films are streamed on streaming services. And most consoles have a cheaper options where you don't have to have an optical drive at all. But in this situation, the exam, this is what they'll be getting at. 